Welcome to the Box Center Foundry. We're in lovely Angola, Indiana at Trine University, formerly Tri-State University. We're going to present one of the capstone projects for the engineering department. This was a project for three mechanical engineers with minors in metallurgical engineering and one dual major mechanical and electrical engineer. The current capabilities of the Trine University foundry include traditional green sand casting and permanent mold casting. The chair of our department, the mechanical engineering department, would like to have a die casting process. So the group of students that I mentioned earlier are going to put together a die casting machine. The goal of this project was to design and build a safe, stable, and easily maintained laboratory scale die casting machine that is movable and has data acquisition. As you can see, our die cast machine is built on a cart. Uh, this provides the requirement of mobility. Um, we are using clear shielding so that we can see all the components. To shield the motors, we have perforated metal on a tube frame. This also provides ventilation. Control panel is designated to four quadrants. Upper left is interlock, upper right is displays, bottom left is motor controls, and bottom right is your emergency stop. Our interlocks will light up depending on if our uh, doors are open or closed or if our temperature is too high. Our display will show the position of our position sensors and our temperatures. Uh, the motor controllers will uh, move the die uh, open and closed and move our shot tip uh, forward and reverse. An emergency stop will just stop all action at the time. The interlock system, there's three interlocks we have. Uh, the first two are related to position sensors. Uh, if you open our door, if you open the front door or the top door, uh, one of our interlocks are going to light up, indicating that uh, it's a fail safe so you can't actually operate it and create pinch points. And our last one is located with the thermocouples, uh, and that's going to Go uh, the interlock is going to activate if our temperature gets too high. Now for a close-up of our die and locking system. Here we have a top view. As you can see, there's the die and the locking system bars right there. As the machine opens up, the locking system moves with it. A design consideration we took into account is uh, future groups wanting to design their own and cast their own parts. So in, to do that, our platen and die system is in two parts. We have a die insert that can be removed from the platen itself. The first step in our casting process is to close the die. Uh, this locking mechanism uh, provides a mechanical clamp for the die in case of an electrical failure or uh, other mechanical failures in the, in the machine. Alright, so the process starts by melting either tin or tin bismuth ingots. So we put our ingot in the crucible, turn it on, wait for it to melt, check that it's at the right temperature that we want to pour at, and then we're ready to cast. So we take this ladle, scoop out a shot's worth of metal, come over here, open the door to the injection system, take the metal up to the shot tube, pour it in the opening, bring it back out, close the door, and then we're ready for the electrical process. Okay. There are two really traditional types of tensile specimens. We have the circular cross section and the dog bone, which is a rectangular cross section. The machine we're making is going to cast a dog bone specimen with the rectangular cross section. We are also casting a step block to use for educational purposes in order to highlight the thin casting abilities of the die casting process. 
The step block we designed is 0 0.05 inches thick. Once the part is casted and cools, the, die, the locking mechanism must be released and the, the die opened. In this demonstration, the tin solidified in the shot tube and uh, it bound the plunger and did not allow a part to be cast. In a second attempt, the shot tube was preheated. However, preheating expanded the shot tube and shot tip and binding them together and preventing injection.